The section of the east-west rail route between Bicester and Bletchley is using the section of the old Varsity line which closed in the 1960s, whilst the section from Bletchley to Bedford involves the upgrade of the Marston Vale line which was saved from closure. However, the section between Bedford and Cambridge will involve building an all-new railway. Reusing the Varsity line was considered, however was discounted for a number of reasons. Not least because some sections have been built upon, particularly approaching Cambridge from the south, whilst the section through Bedford now forms part of a country park. The proposed route from Bedford to Cambridge has been criticised locally, and on the face of it does look like it takes an unnecessarily indirect route which meanders from Bedford to Cambridge. But it seems that by trying to provide value for money and attempting to build around existing infrastructure and conurbations has led to a route that could be described at best as a compromise. But it is argued that the route connects key locations in order to improve overall connectivity. Even though every effort has been made to reduce the number of properties needed to be purchased, ultimately some will still have to be purchased to make way for the line. Heading north from Bedford for example, 65 properties will have to be purchased. However, this is down from around 97 initially identified in 2021. The reason for this is that the Midland Main Line will need to be widened from 4 tracks to 6 tracks, with 2 tracks dedicated to EWR services. The EWR tracks will head east away from the Midland Main Line with the proposed route situated between Bedford and Clapham. From there the route will head east to the first new station at Thamesford. The proposed station at Thamesford will provide an interchange with the East Coast Main Line with East West Rail crossing over the Main Line. The proposed route will avoid having to travel through St Neots with the route also having been refined so that it passes Roxton to the north. It is argued that the new station at Thamesford will provide better opportunities for the community to grow, which I think is a way of saying will support house building, with the potential for RAF Thamesford, which is officially designated a brownfield site, to be developed. However, the suggestion that the population in the area could balloon to 44,000 was strongly denied during an EWR Q&A. From Thamesford, it is proposed the line will head northeast, requiring a sharp, almost 90 degree turn, with the route running parallel with the proposed A428 road alignment. After running north for approximately 5 kilometres, the line curves to the east towards the next new station located at Camborne. The new station will be located on the north side of the A428 and will be situated close to the road junction for Camborne. From Camborne, the route curves to head southeast, crossing the A428. This section of the route could potentially impact the Bourne Airfield housing development, however, EWR say only a small section to the northeast would be needed. From there, the proposed route would head southeast in between Highfields Caldicott and Hardwick. The line would then continue in a southeasterly direction before joining the Cambridge line to the east of Foxton. The consultation document states that the northern approach into Cambridge would be cheaper than the southern approach. However, it was decided that the northern approach would not provide the same level of economic benefits. This is largely driven by the growth and economic value of the Cambridge Biomedical Campus to the south of the city. In addition, the report points out that there are three times as many jobs within walking distance of the planned Cambridge South Station compared with the existing Cambridge North Station. Despite the indirect nature of the route, it is still anticipated that a journey time from Bedford to Cambridge of 35 minutes will be achievable, which compares favourably with the journey by road, which can take anywhere from 50 minutes to 1 hour 30 minutes. As for the Oxford to Cambridge journey time, that is reportedly expected to take around 1 hour 30 minutes, a journey which can take anywhere from 2 to 3 hours by road. Unfortunately, potential passengers will have a long wait before the full EWR route opens, with the Development Consent Order, or DCO, still only in the early stages. The DCO effectively gives the EWR company permission to build the line, but before permission is granted, detailed design work must first be carried out, as well as a statutory consultation which gives people affected by the route a chance to have their say on the detailed designs. The findings from the consultation are expected around the first half of 2024. In addition, a report must be published outlining the environmental impacts and how EWR plans to mitigate those impacts. 
Once submitted, the Planning Inspectorate will examine the proposals, during which time the public can comment on the application. This process usually takes up to six months, after which the Planning Inspectorate will make a recommendation to the Secretary of State whether or not the line should go ahead, with this decision taking up to six months after the closure of the examination. So we may not find out whether or not the line will be given the go-ahead until the middle of 2025 at the earliest. And even if the scheme is given permission to go ahead, the full business case for the line must be considered before being provided with funding so that construction can begin. I couldn't find any official timeline so this is a bit of an educated guess, but I imagine that if the line is given the go-ahead, that construction won't begin until 2026 and I imagine will take around five to seven years to complete, so we shouldn't expect the first passenger trains to start running between Oxford and Cambridge until early 2030.